We're going to be going over Breath First Search, or BFS. BFS is a very popular graphing algorithm, and it's sort of different to DFS in the sense that DFS actually uses a stack under the hood, while BFS uses a queue. Now, a popular application of BFS is simply finding whether or not one node in a graph, let's say A, we will name as our starting point, can get to another node in a graph, let's say F, and we'll call this our destination node. Here is a high level overview of how BFS will work. BFS works in a very spread out breadth first way. So let's say we are starting at A. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our node R. Is R our destination? It is not. So then we are going to go to B. Is B our destination? It is not. So we are going to check the neighbors of B. But here is where the difference between BFS and DFS comes in. While DFS would go to B and then C and then G, as in it goes through the depth of a graph, BFS spreads out at every node. So first it would check C, and since C is not our destination, it would then go to D, and since D is not our destination, it goes to E, and since E is not our destination, it goes to Q. It then, after seeing Q is not our destination, goes back to the first node that B checked and checks all of its neighbors. So we were checking all of C's neighbors, which is G. Since G is not there, we're going to go back and check all of the next node's neighbors, which is D. And finally, we are able to find F. This is a high-level overview of how de uh, Breath First Search likes to sort of spread out the nodes that it checks. And now we're going to look at how it works under the, node, uh, under the hood. The first thing you need to know is there are two data structures that we use when running this algorithm. Number one is what is known as a visited set. Visited set is just a set that you can use to keep all the nodes that you have previously visited in the algorithm. So let's say, for example, if we started at A, we would add A to that visited set so that we know when checking A's neighbors that we don't want to revisit A because we have already been there. This will become a lot more clear when we explain the algorithm. And number two is the queue, the thing that separates depth first search with breadth first search. Here is where we add all the neighbors to our current node. So let's say, for example, if we go back to this example, when we are checking B, we would add all of its neighbors to the Q, C, D, E, and Q. So our Q would look like this, C, D, E, and Q. And after we are done checking B, we would use the front of the queue to determine which node we are going to next. In this case, it was C because it is at the front of the queue. So here is a general rundown of the algorithm that you want to use. This is pseudocode for what you will actually be doing. The first thing is obviously you will already have your map that denotes the graph. Usually that will be something like this. A and then all the neighbors of A in an array. In this case, it would have been B and I believe, um, let's check, B and R. So we can go ahead and just get rid of that. It would have been B and R. And in code, this is generally how um, you would store a graph. B was connected to C, D, E, and Q and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you would have your queue. The first thing you would do is add your initial starting node, so in this case it would be A, to the queue. And that's when you enter this while loop. While the queue is not empty, meaning there are still nodes we can check, the first thing we are going to do is pop from that queue. So we pop A from the queue. Our, our queue is now empty. We add A to our visited set. And then we add all the neighbors to A into our queue. And notice when we pop from our queue, the first thing we do is we check if the node is our destination. If it is not, then we continue on with the rest. If it is, we can break out of the algorithm because we know we found where we're looking for. So let's see this in action. Let's start at A. The first thing in our current queue is A. So the first thing we do is we pop it out. So now we are dealing with A. Oops. 
is A our destination? No, A is our starting point. So what are we going to do next? We are going to first add A to the visited set. We are then going to add A's neighbors to the queue. So let's add R and B to the queue. And B to the queue. Now we move on to the next part of the loop. We go back to the top. So then we pop R from the queue. So let's get R and let's pop it out. Is R our destination? Well, no, R is not our destination. F in this situation is our de destination. So what we're going to do is add R to our visited set, and we're going to add the neighbors to the queue. However, R's only neighbor is A, and A is already added to our visited set, so we actually don't add it back to the queue. This is what prevents us from double adding or double visiting a node that we already know is not our destination node. So let's move on. The next thing we are going to pop from the queue is now B. So we can go ahead, oops. Let me go ahead and erase all this stuff. Uh -uh. So the next thing we are going to pop from the queue is B. So now we are, oops, sorry about that. Now we are looking at B. B is number one, not our destination node. So we're going to go ahead and add it to our visited set. And then we are going to add all of its neighbors to the queue. So C, D, E, and Q. Now that we have added C, D, E, and Q, we can go ahead and pop the first thing in our queue. Now remember, a queue is first in, first out, sort of like the same queue that you would get at a shopping mall. Now, C was the first thing we added, so let's go ahead and pop C out of the queue. We are going to add C to our visited set since it's not our destination, and then we are going to go ahead and add its neighbors to our queue. So its only neighbor that we haven't visited, because we've already visited B and it's in our visited set, is G. So we're going to go ahead and add G into our queue. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop the next thing out, which is D. Now we are looking at D. Is D our, visited, our destination? No, so we're going to add it to our visited set, and we're going to add its neighbors to our queue. Now, notice our next neighbor of D, the only neighbor we can actually add, is F, which is, coincidentally, our destination node. However, we still have to go through every single element here before we actually get to F to verify that we can get to it. So then we would follow the same process, we would go ahead and we would pop E out of the queue. Um, we would pop E out of the queue, we would add its neighbors, uh, we would add it to the visit set, then add its neighbors, then we would pop a Q out, add it to the visit set, it has no neighbors other than B, and then finally we would be able to pop F out, which is our destination, we can break out of the algorithm and return true that A can actually get to our destination F. Now let's look at an example where we can't. And by the way, this is a good time to mention this. If you guys found find value in this video, please consider leaving a comment and subscribing. It really helps the channel out so I can get more videos um, and get a lot more uh, you know, views and it really helps the channel out, so thank you. Now let's look at an example where we actually can't. So this is an example of a directed graph which I talked about in the, um, in the last video. So we can see A is able to get to B, B is able to get to D, and D is able to get to E, and C is able to get to B. But B cannot actually go to A. That is the fundamental understanding of what a directed graph is. So the, our, let's say our start node is A and our destination node is C. Let's quickly go through the algorithm and show what happens when we actually can't get to the node. So our Q is going to start with A because that's our destination. We're going to go ahead and pop A out. We are going to add A to the visited set and add its, um, add its neighbor, which is B, to our Q. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, repeat this process. We're going to take B out. B is now our new node that we are looking at. We're, it's not our destination node, so we're going to add it to the visited set. And we are going to add all the neighbors it can reach, which in this case is only D because it's a directed graph. We are going to add D to our Q. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to pop D out of the queue. We are going to see 
we are going to see that D is not our destination. So we're going to add D to our visited set. And we're going to go ahead and add its neighbors, which is E, to our queue. And now finally, we are going to pop E out. Oops. We are going to pop E out. It is now the new node that we are looking at. It is not our destination, so we are going to add it to our visited set. But now there are no neighbors that we can add to our queue. We can't add D because of the directed property, which says D can get to E, but E cannot get to D. Uh, even if we, if it wasn't directed, e, uh, D is still in our visit set, so we couldn't add it anyways. So now our queue is empty by the time we come back to the front of uh, the loop. And what we do is we break out and return false because we are not able, there is nothing left in the queue, so there's no, many, no more nodes to check. We are not able to get from A to C. I hope this was very clear. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Next week, I'm going to be doing a video on DFS, which I sort of explained in the beginning, but hope you found this clear, and thanks for watching.